Hello. It's Monday, December 17th. Today I want you to take the time to hear what I've got to say. I'm going to tell you how this silent coup, step by step, is going to steal our country right out from under us. And if you listen to the steps, you'll see that a lot of it's already done. Before I get into it, I'd like to say that about two or 3,000 people have heard the program the last one I did. To my knowledge, about five or six people have sent help. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you, we have to have money. We have to. We've got a lot of work to do, materials and things that are going to have to be bought. I spend 24 hours a day, essentially, working on this. I need your help. I cannot continue alone. I just can't. Please help. I know you're listening. Some of you have very little and some have none. I understand all of that. But wait until you hear this nightmare. And then realize that this nightmare is not a nightmare. It's real. Now you may wonder, how can I know step by step what they're going to do? Well, folks, it's because I've lived it already. Mm -hmm. I've already done this. It was in a small state called Arkansas. <clears throat> and what has happened, what we did in Arkansas is now in Washington. So I can tell you step by step what's going to happen, as it did here for years under the Clinton reign, under the system that now has Washington. Well, let's get started. First, if you're going to pull off something like this, and they've been doing it, by the way, for years and years and years, so don't think this is just something new that just started. No, sir. This has been going on, building and building and building until the right elements all lined up. And that's why I told you critical mass was coming. We are to the point where the elements, the components, are lined up for the first time. It starts. It starts with money. You know, you've got to have money to pull something like this off. We think about who's involved with the deep state. Money. Money pays your politicians. Money makes the world go round. And all these big corporations that have put in so many lobbyists, they've got the money. Then you've got foreign governments, foreign countries that are chipping in. It's not just the United States, it's global. So you got to have money. And then, you know, you you got to take over what Hitler tried to do, what Paul Pop did in Cambodia. Burn all the books. you got to burn the books. Well, folks, we haven't had a book burning. But yes, we have. Years ago, years ago, they learned how to burn books without fire. They went out and started training teachers. And teachers, innocently, mostly, most of them, became absorbed in social engineering and they didn't even know it. They were taught to teach what they were taught. Then they get into schools. And once our children get in the schools, that's when they learn to read the books. And the teachers that teach, teach them what books to read and what to read out of the books and how to read them. I don't think there's many people on this program today that would hardly recognize the school books, the history books, certainly American history, at schools today versus what we had. So now you got money, you've burned the books, so there's a whole culture of children who will grow up to be, uh, what? Oh, I got it. Millennials. 
And I'm not just taking on them. It's many generations other than just that. But the millennials are the first complete generation. They know nothing but. That's a pretty good deal. You better get one other thing if you're going to do it. You better control the media. Mm -hmm. Because the next things you've got to do are a little bit more obvious. The shady part's going to start coming out. So the best thing to do now is take over the media. It takes a little time to take over the media. <laughs> Once again, the money... <clears throat> excuse me, has to float around till they buy this media, buy that media, close that media, open that media. And then every time a reporter comes along, you know, that might want to go out and do right, they have to make sure they fire them and get rid of them. I'll tell you a little story. Mike is a cause. Well-respected reporter. I'm not sure who he works for now, but he's a big gun. He was a reporter for the Washington Post when I was coming out against Clinton. I had given him a preview of the uh, Lewinsky stuff, Monica Lewinsky. He had the story of the century. Without tying up the whole show, he had the story. But when he went, promised me, swore to me. He would get it in the post. It was the biggest story of a lifetime. When he went to his publication, they spiked the story. He wouldn't run it. He called me. I was furious, and I gave it to Matt Drudge. That's how you got Matt Drudge. That story made him. And his cop was mad <laughs> and quit, thinking, of course, being the great reporter, and he was, great reporter that he was, he would get another job just immediately. Several, several, several weeks passed, he could not find anybody that would hire him. Eventually went to Newsweek, which, by the way, was owned by the same people that owned the Washington Post. He had made his peace with the big bosses and swore he would probably not ever do that again, cross them again. That's how it works. You got the media, but you got to be subtle with the media now. You can't just come out and look obvious yet. Just be cool. And that's what the media does. They'll be cool for years. Be cool. Now that you got the media, you can get into some of the more slippery deals. If you're going to be out doing corrupt things to take over a state, or in this case, a country, you're going to. Be careful. So you know what you do? With that money, with that power of the media, you start handpicking politicians. But don't just pick politicians. Let's deal with law enforcement. You pick the sheriffs. You pick the judges. You pick everything. And you make sure that if you want to do something, that there is no sheriff out there that might blow the deal for you. Make sure that you've got all the judges under control. And if you've got all the sheriffs and all the judges, nobody can touch you. And they didn't. But now you move it out of like a state like Arkansas to Washington. It's a little bit bigger game, but the same ploy. Now you've got to go through with that money, with the politicians, with the media, with law enforcement, everything you've got going for you. Now you've got to die. Politicians, well, that's the easiest part. It's a little corrupt. Maybe it's a lot of corrupt. But it's slick. But you work, and you work, and you work, and you finagle, and you cheat. And when you've got that powerful media behind you, if you've got a politician that's running that's trying to go against you, you know, hey, turn the media on them, destroy them. Does that sound familiar? Then you've got the politicians, you've got the justice, you've got the law enforcement, you've got the media, you've got the money. Now, what do you do? You wait a lifetime for this moment, folks. A lifetime. Now, you've got the FBI, the Justice Department, 
the judicial system, the Supreme Court, the Congress. You've waited a lifetime for this. And you've got all the politicians. And you've got the media. You can put anybody in office that you want. You've got the three branches of government. Legislative, judicial, and executive. And you've got two of them in your hip pocket. It's ready to close the door. I just need that one last seat. And you've got to have the person to be president that's in on it that can pull it off. Well, that's when the turd got me buttermilk. It was supposed to be here. But it wasn't. It wasn't Donald Trump. And for the first time, Americans were able to see in primaries how I had tried for 30 years to tell you all this stuff. For 30 years I've tried to tell you. Oh, he's a liar. He's a scumbag. He's a fraud. Whatever. I've tried. Well, now it's here. Now it's here. You saw in the primaries where they openly got caught cheating trying to stop Trump in the Republican primary. Over and over and over again, they rigged it against him. You saw it yourself in the Democratic primary. Bernie Sanders, the Clintons, cheated him out of it. You saw it out front in front of God and everybody. But I believe God intervened. And I believe as powerful and as complete as they are with the system, the coup, I think God for some reason gave us one more chance. And he gave us President Trump. Now, uh, you should be able to figure out how I knew before President Trump ever even got elected. I said, if he ever got elected, they'd impeach him. Then when he got elected, I said, when he gets in office, they'll impeach him. How did I know that two and a half years ago? Well, now you know. You see, it's all part of the chronological chain of events that have to happen. So now we're to the critical mass. There's one thing hanging. President Trump. President Trump. What are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Hmm? Now, I've heard a bunch of stories. I've heard, well, everything be all right. God's in control. God, I believe, is very much in control. But I also know from scriptures, Pastor Sanders and others that told me or I heard them, whatever, faith without works is dead. Now, my interpretation of that is God's going to do it, but he kind of expects us to do some of it too. And if we don't do our part, I think that's where that death comes in. I've heard I'm a nobody, I'm a little person, I don't have money, I can't change anything. I've heard all that too. What do you think I was when I started against Bill Clinton, the President of the United States, me and nobody, below a nobody, trying to get the truth out about him and her, Hillary. See, I could take that same route myself, could have, probably should have. And I got one thing that stops me. It's the debt I owe the United States of America. It's the debt I owe the four founding fathers. It's the debt I owe all the people that have died trying to protect and defend this country. I can't. I can't stop. You can't do anything. Well, you can't do anything. They got all the money. They got all this, that, and the other. Folks, we can. If you'll help me, we can. But I've got to have help. I've got to have something. Number one, I've got to have help financially. Good God, got to. 
then we got to have the army. <laughs> we got to have an army of people. Well, what, what, Larry, would we have to do? We have to get out in the streets and get her done? No. 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 Our founding fathers gave us three distinct weapons for this time when it came, and they knew it would come someday. They did. You know what they were? They got, gave us our voice, our voices collectively, and our vote. Now, think about that. That's what they gave us. Well, look what they've done to us. They've rigged voting if you're not careful. If you're not attentive, they'll cheat at the vote. We don't have a vote. But if we do fight back, if we do get involved with the election process, you know what? We can get our vote back. And they stopped our vote singularly. Look, uh, gosh, Alex Jones, uh, Tucker Carlson, Hannity, Laura. I mean, think about it. Anybody trying to say what we want said or think needs to be said to the people of this country, they've shut it down. Our voices collectively. Oh, and by the way, if you say anything, if you're not careful, you're a racist, a homophobe, a mixophobe, whatever you would call a borderphobe. They've done all that. Our voices collectively. That's the one they have not penetrated yet. At least not totally. At least not totally. I'm out here on the limb. I am. Well, I gotta stop for a second. I missed something. In our original thing in Arkansas, there was no internet. So along comes talk radio. That's how I got to Bill Clinton through talk radio. Well, now it's gone. But in its place came the internet. Well, just like a coup is supposed to do, a silent coup is supposed to do, they took their money, their power, and every day we have less freedom on the internet, less truth on the internet, internet, and more, more disinformation. We can take it back. We can take it back. As long as Donald Trump is, Trump is president, we can get our voices together and take it back. Somebody said there's a bunch of people getting their guns. You're going to have a revolution. Who the hell are you going to shoot? Huh? <clears throat> get mad. Get your gun. Get out in the street. Who are you going to shoot? I thought the Civil War taught us a lesson. In a Civil War, us, amongst, uh, us against us, guess what? The only people who get killed are us. That's not the answer. Founding fathers knew that. I found it. Yes, they gave us the Second Amendment. Yes, we have the right to keep bear. Yes, they did. But if you'll remember back then, also they were set up to where we didn't have a huge standing army. They felt like a minimum-sized army could be supported by independent militias throughout the country. So if we were invaded again, we would have a ready force ready to defend, to defend this nation. I think that's what they were talking about and have read that many times in some of their original documents. If we go out shooting, who's going to shoot? Well, there's going to be Russians or Chinese or whatever. Could be. Could be. That won't happen yet. That won't happen yet. That won't happen as long as Donald Trump's president. That won't happen until the day. And here's the punchline you've been waiting for. Until the day that this money bought progressive controlled Congress backed by <coughs> our judicial system and Supreme Court justices <coughs> forgive me and the then president not Donald Trump, their president, announces, you know, Congress can't do anything anymore. 
They're, they are so divided between Democrat and Republican, which is a total lie, one and the same. They're so divided that you notice they can't even pass a bill for anything. So, ladies and gentlemen, we, with the computer, with every te with television, <laughs> with everything that the founding fathers didn't even know about back then, you know what? It's, it's time to redo our form of government. And so Congress votes. The new president signs. The Justice Department and the legal system, they all support it. The Supreme Court backs it up. And we're no longer a representative of a public form of government. We are what they are cleverly coding now, a socialist democracy. But you know, they never tell you, what is a socialist democracy? It's a socialist country where people think they get to vote. Never thought about that, did you? Yeah, people get to vote. Cuba, they get to vote. Like I've told you before, the campaign slogans are different. In the old days, just vote for Castro or die. I mean, they're just cute little sayings like that, but they let the people vote so the people would shut up and think they had some part in their government. But they learned over the years, wait a minute, the same people keep getting it. And the same families get in power. And you know what? The money people figured out a long time ago. When you're playing this game, like we did in Arkansas, if you're playing this game, you know what? You can go out and raise money and raise money and raise money until you're richer, 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 but that takes a lot of time and skill, hard work. But you know, when you control the government, when you get everything, when you've completed the silent coup and you have everything in your grasp, you know what? Instead of you worrying about raising money, you got an idea. Let's just keep everybody else from having any. Does that sound familiar? Huh? Let's just keep everybody else from having any. Do you think Washington gives two hoots and a tinker's damn about the environment? No, they don't. I've been with them for years and years. They don't. It's the joke of jokes. Well, then why we got an environmental protection agency? Oh, because that's another agency that can be formed that can create another tax to take more money from the people. Think of all the things they've come up with that we need so that we have to have a tax to pay for what we need. Think about when we were young, most of us. Think about a government job back then. It didn't pay nothing. But now it had good benefits, you know, being a government government. It didn't pay nothing, but they had to make up for it with benefits. Now, ladies and gentlemen, dear God, now the government pays more than the private sector, and they still get the benefits. When it just tears me up, is this thing coming up and shutting down the government in Washington? You know what they're going to do? They're going to lay off the central judge. They're going to lay off non-essential judge. Well, if they're non-essential, why the hell are we paying for them in the first place? But here's the catch-22. <clears throat> Those people are going to get laid off. I'm sorry if they do. I'm sorry. But don't worry. Because they tell them, don't worry when you come back. We'll pay for any back pay that will you. I'm sorry. How does that how does that accomplish anything? Anybody know? They're not cutting off Social Security payments. They're not cutting off defense. They're not cutting off whatever that we would see and affect us every day. They're just giving some people a week or two or a month vacation. Until they get back, they get paid. We pay for it. Bring in the Mexicans. Do you think they care about the damn Central Americans and Mexicans coming into this country? Do you think they even care? They don't. <clears throat> but I tell you what, they don't care about them. They care about us a hell of a lot less. Every one of you, if you got 74,000, pick you up one or two. Pick me up one or two. Somebody's talking about these poor people, ask them, say, go down there and take on four or five of them, bring it in your house, and you pay for them, you take care of them, you raise them. Well, they won't do that. <clears throat> and the real test is, if four or five illegal immigrants came to anybody's door listening to this program or the liberal programs or any of them, if they came to the door and said, hey, we're coming in and we want you to feed us, clothe us, take care of us, 
da 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 You know what? Everybody in America do. They call the police and run them off. Well, why if we would do that at home, do we not do it at the border? You want to know the end? The end's coming. The end is coming. I hope you see now why I'm so perturbed. I hope you see now why I've been where I've been for 30 years. I've tried to tell. I tried to stop it before it got to the components all got together and were connected to this critical mass. I tried. It's my fault I didn't succeed. But we're here now. We're here now. <clears throat> you got it? Now, I'm not asking you. For us to throw a Hail Mary, knowing 99.99% .99 of the chances they'll never work. Think of it more like we got two seconds left and we're on the one yard line. Bottom line, that means you got one play left to get in. If you don't get in, you lose. If you get in, you win. We're on the one yard line. Our country. That's how it ends. That's how it ends. That's when the critical mass connects all of the pieces. And if we dare say anything, now look at it now. If you dare say anything, you could get roasted like Kavanaugh. If you dare fight, you could be framed like Flynn. Those are examples of what will happen at the macro level that's going to happen to us at the micro level in our hometowns and our communities. When they're through, if you want to know how it is to live like that, <clears throat> ask people that lived in Nazi Germany in the 30s and 40s. Ask them what it was like when you couldn't even talk to your neighbor, afraid they'd turn you in. Just being an agitator. Will you help me now? I told you stuff ain't nobody else going to tell you on the Internet. There ain't no profit. I ain't writing no rhymes and letting you guess what the answer is. I ain't doing none of that. Everything I just told you, you just go to wherever you want to go and look for yourself. Look for yourself. Think of every major component in our government, and then you tell me. Every major component. Every branch. Every division. You tell me. Media, you tell me, you tell me. Somebody was saying, well, you need to get this to the people. People need to hear it. How in the hell are we going to do that? Somebody said, well, Trump needs to do it. How's Trump going to do it? And I'll tell you, folks, if the President of the United States cannot get to 98% of the people in this country with what he tries to say, don't think anybody else is going to be just able to blitzkrieg out there and do it either through the mainstream media. No, we have to have a plan to get right to the people under the radar of the media and tell the truth. If you'll help me, we'll do that. You're not going to be risking anything now. No, you're, they're not going to come get you. The jack booted thugs are not going to kick your door in. No. But I assure you, when this critical mass explodes, then it's over. Then they'll come to your door. If you dare to cross the system. So, folks, please, it's Nichols Live at AOL. Nichols Live at AOL. Or go to the website, NicholsLive.com. And the Nichols Live AOL, that's, that's uh, PayPal. NicholsLive.com is the web page thing or whatever thing it is, and you can go there and there's a button to push or something to send money. But I need you now. I need you now because come January, come January, things are going to start changing. And uh, I would suggest we be ahead of the change. With that, do me a favor, help me. Do yourself a favor, help me. And do your country a favor, help me. And just pray to God that we can work together 
and stop it. Thank you.